What's up guys, Tim here, and this is No Prep News, episode number 42. This week, we have some big stuff to talk about for the main topic of this week. But as always, before we get into that, we got the comments from last week to discuss. And you guys are leaving some good comments talking about some of the things we discussed last week. Sorry, I'm pulling up the comments right here on my phone right now, and we will get right into it. Richie Seagraves said, Have you noticed they're starting to look like the 405? Brian Britt has went twin turbo on the Assassin. JJ put a Pro Charger in Old Heavy. Hercules went Pro Charger and now bought a 390 no prep car. Soon as they got 405 type money, they started to get 405 type cars. LOL. I really don't know how to respond to that because some of these guys have been doing that for a little. Like Brian Britt went twin turbo on the Assassin a while ago. We just dis- we discussed that when that happened. But I can't deny the fact that you can tell they're dumping a lot more money into the cars. I mean, it makes sense because they're making more money now from doing the shows and stuff. I heard some, I think it was a couple weeks ago we talked about how much money JJ actually makes from the shows. Someone left a comment and I was, it just blew my mind. I was like, they make that much money from these episodes and stuff? So obviously if they're making a whole bunch of money from racing, they're going to, It's literally investing money because they're dumping it back into the cars to be faster, make more content, do more stuff. So it makes complete sense for them to spend all the money on the cars and stuff. But we saw the same thing with the 405. I mean, like once those guys started to make money, we started to see an increase in the level that those cars were at. And I think it's cool to see the Memphis guys essentially follow the same path as we're seeing start off with all the grassroots cars that pretty much everyone can relate to and slowly build up more and more and more until they get those cars to that top level. I think it's really cool to see and it's been fun to follow them along the way. Alan Lord said, JJ and the Nova will never hit threes. The car may get down, but he'll not make it there. Love your stuff, man. Keep it going, OG. And I was thinking about it, and I really don't know. I don't regard you to say there's no way he's going to get that thing down to threes. Obviously, it's going to be difficult, and it's going to be a while until he would eventually get there because they, they've never had a car at that level. He was talking about the level the car's at. It is, it's like, it's a crazy car. Three second car. Pro Charged Hemi, that is the real deal, top tier stuff you could get right now for the whole Street Outlaw type racing. There, is, I always feel weird when I say I say like the Street Outlaw racing, but it's like I don't know what else to I don't I don't know what else to call it. I, ho- I hope it makes sense to what you guys when I just say that real quick. But for that stuff, that car is a top level car, and JJ's been like a lot of people are leaving comments about this. I didn't, I didn't pick out all of them because there's so many of them. You guys have so many comments replying to the stuff with JJ and his car. And thank you all for that. But so many people are saying they've had these, like, the cars we can relate to and the stuff they've had since the beginning of the show. And now he's making that big jump. Obviously, it's going to take him a while to get it all sorted out, get it all figured out, and get that car to that top level. We've seen it with absolutely everybody. When they make some big jump or huge change, everyone has roadblocks to begin with, and they hit bumps and mess up and do all kinds of stuff. So it'll only be a matter of time, but I'm sure JJ will eventually get that car sorted out. Will it ever be a three-second car? We will just have to wait and see. And the next comment is from Mark Smith. He said they could never get an episode done in two hours. Sometimes they race all night long. Then Sketchy's Garage replied with, Our episode took two nights to shoot at Fastest in America last year. And they're referring to last week when we brought up if they were to ever do a live stream of a list night for the 405. And again, like I was saying, Sometimes it takes all night, I, unless they plan everything out, and they're like, this is going to happen at 11.30, midnight we're doing this, 12.30 we're doing this, and like have everything set in stone, planned out ahead of time, to when everything's going to go down. I could see him doing it then. Yes, it would be awesome to see. Obviously, it would be at night, like late at night, because they filmed this all through the night, so I, I really don't know if they were to ever do it. Thinking of it now, the hours it would be on, it's not really good for like numbers and stuff for people viewing it and watching because it's Monday night. Who's going to be up at 1 a.m.? Most people aren't going to be out there watching from midnight to 2 a.m. Uh, Street Outlaw live stream because that is when it seems like a lot of the races go down and stuff. So I really don't know if it were to ever happen. I think it's a great idea. I think it's an awesome idea and something that could potentially be huge and really cool to see in the future. 
But as of right now, how they currently have the races and stuff set up and how they film it, I don't, unfortunately, don't see it happening anytime soon. But trust me, guys, I think that is a genius idea, a live stream for the list night. Have that be an episode of Strauss. Or they do it like they have the season going on and then like on a different night, not on Monday night, on a different night, they do the live filming maybe on like a friday night or saturday night or something like that so people can be up and watch it because it just does people might say oh i'd stay up all night and watch it okay the majority of the people aren't aren't going to be able to stay up and watch the whole thing at 2 a.m but i think like there would have to be a lot of thought and stuff going into it. I, I just said stuff there'd have to be a lot I, I don't know what really what i'm saying guys there'd have to be a lot of time effort energy and th- Truly just thought, going and planning out, that a lot of plan, that's the word I'm looking for. A lot of planning going into it, if we were to ever see a live filming for the Street Outlaw show. Now, I was thinking for No Prep Kings, would they ever do that? And I was thinking about it, and I really don't think they ever would, because of how much they stress having the fans come to the race. Having the fans there, how important that is how that is such a core aspect of no prep kings i don't think they'd ever do a live filming of that maybe live testing other like i think the live idea is a good idea for something they could possibly do in the future willard young then said do you know if they are still going to have a no prep in jupiter florida at the end of august and man i apologize i don't think there's going to be any no preps this year for no prep kings at all. Every week I'm seeing a new event get postponed till next year. It's like April is the month right now. They've been throwing stuff out. April 2021. So I, uh, as much as it sucks and I hate coming out here and bringing the bad news and telling people, like, I always see people say, I bought these tickets and I, or do you think I should refund these tickets? Do you think this event's going to go down? I just feel bad because it's like, I just, I don't have any good news because I, I just do not see it happening really in any way, shape, or form. They keep postponing all these events, and I truly, as much as it sucks, and I hate saying this, but I keep bringing it up because people keep bringing it up in the comments, keep asking about it. As much as it sucks, I truly believe we will not be seeing any No Prep Kings for 2020. We'll all be moved on to 2021. Then Timothy Britt left a comment saying they did film it on Street Outlaws, and he was referring to us discussing Outlaw Armageddon last week, which we're going to discuss in a little bit, but he was. Someone asked, I think, if they did ever end up filming it for a show. And thank you for confirming it right there. Looks like they did. I thought they did, but I wasn't 100% positive. They did, in fact, film out Armageddon's for Street Outlaws once before. Then Steve Ellis said, maybe a pay-per-view season finally, 405, the real deal Street Outlaws, hashtag OG. And I I thought I could be I could be thinking of something completely different. I could be thinking of some fight that was going on that was going to end up being pay-per-view. But I thought that I saw something that was had something to do I guys, I apologize. I think I'm completely wrong about this. So I'm I don't I'm trying to think if I I thought I th- saw or heard of something that said pay-per-view with like a drag race or something. I could be wrong about that. But I'm not going to deny the fact that I think that's a good idea. I think that is something that we could be seeing in the future. Look at Cletus McFarlane. He did a pay-per-view for his. He did like the Freedom 5. He did some race with all the... I think it was the Freedom 500. He did the race at the Freedom Factory with the Crown Vicks and all the other creators coming out and racing like the Demolition Derby type race with the Crown... Or Endurance type race with the Crown Vicks. He did the pay-per-view, then released... The show, it's or the actual race and everything, the pay per view stuff, a couple weeks later, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's something that they could do for Street Outlaws, and it would just bring in so much more money and would help them do so much more, make stuff bigger, better, faster, more fun and exciting to watch. Because the more money these guys make, the more money is dumped into this, the better the content is for us. So seeing something like that happen, I think it'd be really cool. And again, going into live stuff. A ma- like I could see something like that happening. It's like a pay-per-view thing to see it live. Or they just have a live camera for the whole list night or something. And that's like a pay-per-view thing you have to buy into. I, I just I got a lot of ideas for this stuff and what they could be doing and what they could potentially do in the future. And a lot of it comes from the comments like that. Stuff you guys leave in the comment section down below. You guys got some great ideas. And I love elaborating on it and stuff like that. So that kind of right there just... It got me thinking. I was like, there's a lot of potential there, a lot of stuff they could end up doing. And I, I mean, will we ever see a pay-per-view street outlaws? I really don't know. Is it a good idea? Yes, I think it's a good idea. But 
I just, man, I just don't know. I, I think it's a good idea, and I like your thoughts on that, and maybe we'll discuss that some more in the future. Then getting into the slow prod. You got a picture of a Toyota Supra as your profile picture, man. Those cars are sweet. A group of friends and myself went to a No Prep Kings filming. Longest no prep event ever. So much downtime between rounds. It would be cool, but for it to be a live race night, but it would have to be a 47-hour stream. Keep up the good work. I've been watching since the Chief interview. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for that comment. And the thing is, though, I feel they've been figuring it out as they go. Because when Chief and Sean first started talking about No Prep Kings on the Chief and Sean show on the podcast, they were talking about like all that stuff you were just saying, the downtime and how long it took and all that crazy stuff that was around the race and like how much of a disaster it seemed like it was but it seems like over time they've just been figuring it out getting it better and better because from what i've been seeing it's only been getting more and more popular with people asking about it fans going to it fans telling me about them going to the races all that stuff so it seems like it's just been slowly getting better and better and yes you said it was the longest no prep ever and i i'm not denying that that probably you're probably right it probably took forever but over time it seems like they've been getting all the kinks and stuff ironed out and making it as best as they possibly can. And now time to get to the main topic. The main topic of this week is Ryan Martin. You might be thinking it's Outlaw Armageddon. Yes, Outlaw Armageddon took place. It went down last weekend. We might talk about Outlaw Armageddon some more and like the other classes and stuff next week's episode of No Prep News. But I almost said No Prep Kings. Next week's episode of No Prep News. But this week, I want to focus on Ryan Martin. This guy is on another level right now. He just came out with his new car this past winter. The it doesn't I don't even think it has a name yet. The Fireball Camaro, the new Fireball Camaro, that's what we'll call it. The gray car, he had what the t same setup as the original Fireball Camaro, completely changed it. I believe it has a pro charged Hemi in it right now if I'm not mistaken. It could be is it a 41X? It's got a it's got a Pro Charger under the hood. I know that for a fact. He's changed it over to Pro Charger before they even brought the car out and started racing it. But right now, in the OG Fireball Camaro, Ryan I said Camaro weird. The, Ryan Martin is at the top. He's the king dingaling when it comes to the Street Outlaws right now. Let me just list out some of the stuff this man has achieved with this car in the past co competitions races he's been to. Guys, these are the biggest things he could possibly compete in in the world of Street Outlaws. He won No Prep Kings. He's number one on the list. He won both big tire classes at Outlaw Armageddon. All in the same car. When he has a new car, he's bringing out. And he said this new car is faster than the original Fireball Camaro. This guy is on another level, unlike anything we have ever seen in the history of Street Outlaws. He's winning it all. We've seen guys king dingling of maybe the street, then king dingling at racing at the track. The closest thing we've seen to this, I would say, would be Big Chief with the original Crow. But right now, without a doubt, I'm going to go out and say Ryan Martin is the fastest guy out there for the whole street outlaws world it's just it i'm like i'm at a loss for words thinking about it i want you guys to make sure leave your comments in the comment section down below about this your thoughts and opinions on this as well he won no prep kings number one on the list he's always been top three at the list it seems like then he comes out here what the heck was that there was just some i i think it was a bunny I thought it was a bunny. There's some animal that ran across the front of Betsy, like in front of Betsy right there. I don't even know what the heck that thing was. We'll, we'll get to that later. But Ryan Martin, he comes out here. Biggest no prep of the year. He comes out with his, we'll say, old car because he has the new car ready to go and cleans house. Smokes everybody he came up against. This guy is just on a completely other level right now, unlike anything we've ever seen before. Hats off to Ryan Martin, to everything he's been able to achieve. He came into Street Outlaws, took everything by storm, and has always been up there as one of the absolute fastest. And this year, he has solidified his spot as the absolute fastest, coming out, being top of the list, winning No Prep Kings, then winning the biggest No Prep of the year, Outlaw again, both 
big tire classes in the same car. This guy right now is the fastest in the Street Outlaws world. Ryan Martin took over everything with the OG Fireball Camaro, and he still has the new car to come out. This guy is going to be, he already is a threat to everyone, but once he comes out with this new car, it's going to be hard to find anyone that will be able to match him and the stuff he has achieved right now. But I'm just going to go out here, wrap it all up right now and say, Ryan Martin is the fastest man in Street Outlaws right now. In the world of this drag racing we discuss here every single week, we've been discussing for years, this current moment in time right now, without a doubt. There, there is no doubt Ryan Martin is the king. So that is all. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. I just still can't. Like, he's he won everything. Leave your thoughts and opinions on all that stuff in the comment section down below. I really want to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. I want If you want me to elaborate on some more, so be it. We'll discuss it in next week's episode of No Prep News. And if you guys want me to discuss some more specifically about Outlaw again, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll discuss it again next week's episode of No Prep News. Some of the top comments is on my favorite comments from this week's episode will be read and discussed in next week's episode of no prep news make sure you guys tune in every single day on my channel for a new video going live every single day at 6 p.m central standard time i will have a new video going live so make sure you guys click that little bell turn the notification on so there's a single video that i upload again all my videos go live at 6 p.m central standard time betsy shirts and hoodies are also available at smithy6z.weebly.com or first link down below in the description i also set up a p.o box so if you guys want to send me stuff address is down below in the description again that is all thank you all so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed make sure you guys follow me on instagram at sim abc xyz don't forget to like and subscribe and this is sim abc xyz signing out